So what happens if you buy the cheapest PLA you can find on Amazon? I don't know. Let's find out. I set my max price to $11 and surprisingly there were some results. So I ordered 12 different rolls from Amazon and now we wait. Excuse me. Okay, it's here. So now we just gotta um, test it out. I'm going into this experiment with the hypothesis that these filaments will all perform decently. This is because I've already tried PLAs all over the price spectrum and noticed very little difference. But for this price point without bulk pricing, I might be proven wrong. We'll find out at the end of the video. Let's take a closer look at each filament that I bought. First up is this colorful brand, which actually ended up being a PLA plus, which at this price point is pretty great. And then on top of that, it has a zipper bag and that's always a nice touch to include. It has a good winding and a plastic spool, which is better for AMS systems. So this one looks promising. Next up was this ABC Wave Print, which is a standard PLA. It comes with a plastic spool and it had a decent winding. At first though, I didn't even think it had a silica packet because it was so small and it was just tucked in along the side of the roll here. But look at it compared to a normal size silica packet. So hopefully this isn't a problem. Come Grow is a pretty established name in the industry. That's who our next filament is from. It's a high speed PLA, so I'm pretty pleased for the price. It comes on a plastic spool and the winding, it looks fine. This one should work well. I'm not sure how you pronounce our next filament. It's either Chex or Chex or CHCKX. Not sure, but this is another standard PLA. This is the warm white color. It came on a plastic spool and it seems to have pretty good winding. iSand Mate is up next. This is another high speed or rapid PLA, which means that it should print well at faster speeds. Again, I'm pretty pleased to get a high-speed PLA for this price point. We've got a, another plastic spool, and the winding on this looks pretty great. We've got another interesting name for our next filament. AI Copy 2, or I Copy 2, or I Cop Ito? I don't know. AI Copy 2, probably. This is a PLA Plus filament again. It comes on a cardboard spool, even though it looks kind of plasticky. The winding looks okay. It just has a little kink in it, but other than that, should be good. This next filament is from Deeply. This comes on a cardboard spool, but the spool does seem sturdy. And the winding on this roll looks pretty good as well. Griddle is our next filament. This is a standard PLA. And again, it comes on a plastic spool, so this is a plus for our AMS users. And just check out the winding on this roll. Isn't that beautiful? So I accidentally bought two rolls from this brand, but we're gonna compare them individually because various colors can perform differently. Solyen is actually a brand of filament produced by Creality. It is being called an Ultra PLA, which apparently means that it can print at faster speeds. It comes on a plastic spool, but the winding is interesting. The first roll that I opened had some pretty messy, rather loose winding. But if we open up the second roll, the winding on this roll is almost perfect. This must be some sort of quality control issue. Just Maker is another standard PLA and the next filament on our list. It comes on a sturdy cardboard spool and I would say that the winding on this roll is just okay. It almost looks like it didn't have quite enough tension when it was being wound, but as long as there's no tangles, it should be fine. Last but not least in our filament lineup is I Sang Goo, or I Sang Who? I don't know, but what I do know is that this filament is labeled as a high-speed PLA. It's got a plastic spool, and the winding looks pretty good. This filament's looking pretty okay to me. 
I labeled all the boxes to keep track of everything and loaded up some filament in my AMS system so that I could easily swap between materials. I then loaded some test pieces into my slicer and with that it was time to start printing. For the test prints I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and have everything just set to generic PLA. Why? Well, because I'm a busy guy and if I'm going to continue to use a brand of filament, I just want it to work without much fuss. I also printed up some forest miniatures to see more details and test how much stringing the filament would have. One of the forest minis failed during the printing, so I canceled that print and reprinted him, which he turned out fine the second time. One of the test prints came out extremely stringy, and since this is often due to moisture, and this was the filament with that tiny little silica packet, I went ahead and dried the filament for 12 hours to give it one more chance. Although I did get a slightly better result, overall this ended up being the stringiest filament that I tested. Before we talk about the results, if you like this type of content and want to see more videos like it, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks so much. Now let's take a closer look at the results. Unfortunately, I did have one filament that was a bit fussy. Although I did get it to print everything, I think the issues I had mostly come down to improper drying from the factory. ABC wave print filament was stringy and it didn't provide me with the best surface quality. This was just a standard PLA and with some tweaking I might be able to improve my results but when I open a brand new roll of PLA I do expect it to be already dry. This iSAN Mate high speed PLA did fail once during testing but when I reprinted the mini I had no further issues. I actually thought the final surface quality was really nice and I would probably still buy this filament again. These five fine filaments all performed well, no major issues and honestly if I ran across these brands again at such an affordable price, I'd probably pick up a few rolls. Let's call this batch my runner-ups. We've got the two Solian rolls and the Deeply brand. The print results were just slightly better than the previous set, and they had good overall surface quality with minimal stringing. Plus, I do like those unique matte colors that are being offered on the Solian rolls. I didn't really have a third place for this video, but Come Grow comes in as my second place. The prints feel solid, they look really good, have practically no surface defects, it didn't give me any trouble while printing, and so at this price point I would definitely pick up this filament again. Colorful 3D printer filament ended up being my number one. I'd never even heard of this brand, but the print results were very clean. It feels sturdy, has beautiful surface quality, and printed easily. Unfortunately, after running these prints, I checked back on Amazon, and it looks like the listing that I bought from is completely sold out. They do have other listings for different types of filament, but I hope their PLA Plus comes back in stock soon, because I'd definitely buy this brand again. My biggest takeaway from this test is that cheap PLA filaments work fine. Are they perfect? No, but some of them are actually pretty great, and it seems that any more, most manufacturers have the process down. I wouldn't be surprised if any of these brands are just white labeled and made in the same factories. I think the biggest issue you will run into is quality control. How's the winding? Is the filament dried completely? Is it packaged well? But what about you? Have you tried these brands before? What was your experience? What kind of filament should I test next? Tell me about it in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!